Welcome to On The Go with Ashdo Transportation TV. Reporting from America's heartland, Iowa, nicknamed the Hawkeye State. Des Moines is Iowa's capital, this gold dome 19th century building, the seat of state power. It and Papa John's Sculpture Park are just two of many local landmarks. Our tour guide, Iowa Department of Transportation Director, Paul Trombino, President of the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, giving us a look up close at his multifaceted, multimodal department. If you look at it from a transportation side, um, we're surrounded by two rivers, Missouri and Mississippi. Um, we're a transcontinental rail state, so we're one of the first states for rail to come through us. We have um, some of the major class ones connections east-west to come through the state of Iowa. Uh, and, you know, we have Interstate 80, 35, 29, uh, 380, so we're, we are at this crossroads for a lot of movement. It can be north-south, uh, you know, from Mexico to Canada, it can be east-west, uh, and you're within a day's travel of pretty much any coast. In 2012, over 6.2 million tons and $5.2 billion worth of commodities were shipped on the waterways to, from, and within Iowa's 60 barge terminals. There are more public road miles in Iowa's 99 counties than there are interstate miles in all of the U.S. Nearly 9,400 of those miles and just over 4,000 bridges are Iowa DOT's responsibility. This state-of-the-art traffic management center uses 385 cameras. Oftentimes, the Iowa DOT employees in this room are the first to report incidents to police. The goal is to share data quickly to prevent secondary crashes and save lives. Ultimately, as I like to say, we help people make decisions, right? So the better information we have, the easier we can put it out in a structure for people to utilize. Helps not only citizens, but businesses make good decisions on the system, which incorporate three things, safety, mobility, and economics. Operators here also control highway message boards. Today's words of wisdom, got cut off, shake it off, shake it off. This is our busiest office uh, in the state. It does. Since his appointment as director in 2011, Trombino says his primary focus has been to improve the way Iowa DOT operates. The Motor Vehicle Division, for example, now has kiosks that can renew driver's licenses, photos and all. Motorists can find kiosks at grocery stores and other locations through this interactive map on Iowa DOT's website. Iowa DOT is also testing digital driver's licenses like this one belonging to Director Trombino. And since 2013, the agency's Bureau of Investigation and Identity Protection has been working to ensure that people are who they say they are. So we'll be actually doing facial recognition not only in Iowa with Iowa residents, but in Nebraska, Illinois, uh, bringing those, those identities in as well. We have fugitive living in Waterloo area that had been on the run since the mid-70s, escaped out of prison in North Carolina, and they had been living, working underneath this other identity of a deceased young person for years. So, we know that it's so important that we to utilize that tool, which is why we're expanding it in, in the next year to other states. Iowa DOT's umbrella also includes a commercial motor vehicle enforcement unit. Its main function is to ensure the safe operation of big rigs on the highways. However, the unit also has a drug dog. Busting bad guys isn't what you think about when you imagine the work of a state DOT. However, innovative planning of highways and bridges is also part of the picture here. One example is this diverging diamond design interchange, the first of its kind in Iowa. The Grand Prairie Parkway project opened in West Des Moines in 2015. Director Trombino says Iowa citizens can expect a lot more improvements, due in large part to a 30% increase in funding for Iowa DOT's overall five-year program. 
revenue coming from both state and federal sources. This has been On the Go with Ashto in America's Heartland with Iowa DOT Director and Ashto President Paul Trombino.